Today we're going to be looking at the hours in the day and how we can look at the hours from a holistic standpoint and tune in to an Ayurvedic perspective of oh, when are the best times of day to do certain activities. And you can take this with a grain of salt or you can run with it or do with it what you will. But it's an interesting conversation and I hope it's one that you will enjoy. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are talking about the hours of the day, and more specifically, how you can make the most of the hours that you have by scheduling things during the hours when they're most relevant. And I know that doesn't make sense now, but hopefully it does in a few minutes time. Now, what I do want to say before we dive into this is what you're going to listen to is actually from a module in my spring renewal program. So you're going to be hearing me referencing things on the screen that was from a slideshow that you do not see, but I do speak through it pretty well. Just know that sometimes I'm going to say something about what I'm seeing on screen and obviously you're not going to see that, but the information is still going to be relevant. Relevant. And this is just a little teaser, this is a little teaser. So if you listen to this and you think that it's really interesting, I'd love for you to reach out for me. Let's have a conversation, talk about it a little bit. Um, I have some other resources that might be of interest to you, or maybe it piques enough interest that you want to do a little work with me, or maybe not, whatever. But I hope that you find this interesting. And I hope that at the end, you see that maybe there is a little something to this Ayurvedic stuff that I talk about so frequently. Because, because whether we're aware of it or not, a lot of the things we do already come from a basis of Ayurveda. It's just, it's existed for 5,000 years. So like, of course, it has changed and evolved into things that we think are modern day ideas that really go back thousands of years. Anyway, before I digress any further, I'm going to share this section with you, and then I'll be back at the end to just wrap things up. So I hope you enjoy it. Now, this is where things get really exciting. Not really. <laughs> doshas and the time of the day. So we already know that the doshas rule our seasons of life. They rule the seasons of the calendar year. They also rule the hours of the day. So we go through the cycle two times, I almost said, I almost used three fingers, two times in the run of a day. So from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., that's calf a time. From 10 until two, that's pitta. From two to six, we're back to vada. Then, oh, I left one of them out. Oh my goodness. From six to 10 is kapha. From 10 to two is pitta. And then from two to 6 a.m. is vada. I was like, why is there only five? So Every day from six until 10 is kapha time. Every day from 10 until two is pitta. And every day from two to six is vada, whether it's AM or PM, it's the same each time. So again, this is not something you need to spend a lot of time thinking about. Like you don't need to get out your calendar and like highlight it for the different times. But there are some things that are gonna be easier to accomplish if you do them during the right time of the day. And that's where this can be really quite helpful. So again, we're going to get more into the individual attributes of each dosha in the next module. And I apologize, but not really. I'm doing this backwards of what I would normally do. I would normally teach you about the attributes of each dosha and get you to figure out what you are before we did this. But because this was a spring program, I'm doing everything in reverse. Um, so we're going to get there. You're just going to have to stay on this train with me a little bit longer. Um, but when you do know which dosha rules each section of the day, it can explain why we do some of the things that we do. So that's the cool thing. So for now, just know that vada is deeply related to creativity, imagination, but can also be related to fear and anxiety, among a lot of other things, but we're just going to focus on those. Kapha is related to getting long, boring things done, <laughs> relaxation, connection. Um, it's also a very mothering um, state and also depression and lacking the desire to do anything. Languishing, another term for that is all kapha based. Pitta is all about getting things done, um, strategizing, organizing, but pitta 
can also be really angry and really irritable. So there's good sides and bad sides to each of the doshas. And again, we'll get into that a little bit more in the next module, not too far, but a little bit more. But those are some things that you need to know when I explain the different parts of the day. So ideal times. So from six until 10, that is going to be your kapha time. Whew, had to use my brain there for a second. It's going to be kapha time. So that's an ideal time of day to have a light meal. So a light breakfast, start taking care of things on a list that you made the day before um, and general productivity. Remember those dull tasks that maybe don't take a lot of brain power, but aren't terribly exciting that time of day, you can really start to get some of that stuff done. Like going through your inbox and cleaning out your inbox first thing in the morning can be a great time to do that. Then from 10 until two, that's an ideal time for things like meetings, for strategizing, for completing the most difficult work of the day, and for eating your largest meal of the day. Pitta, remember it relates to summer, and we realize in the previous module that summer is when our digestive system is at its strongest from 10 until two is when your stomach is going to be the strongest again during the day. It's also going to be strong from 10 until two at night, but we don't want to be eating a meal then. So you want, if possible, to eat your biggest meal or not even your biggest meal, but your most challenging meal from 10 until two. So if you're going to have a salad, if you're going to have raw vegetables, try to have it this time of day because that's harder to digest and your stomach is going to be better equipped to digest that food midday versus later on. So think of it that way. Don't think of it as your largest meal necessarily, but your most difficult meal to digest. So the one that would otherwise cause you the most grief, try to get it in between 10 and two because your stomach is going to be strongest at that period. Then from two to six, but it's a great time to be creative, to make tomorrow's to-do list, to meditate, to exercise. If you have the ability to get up and go do some exercise late afternoon, that's going to be a great time to do it. It's also really a great time for creative work because you're just going to naturally have those juices flowing. Then from six until 10, that's going to be ideal time to have a light meal. And again, I use the words largest meal in the 10 to two, but that's just more, I should have written um, the most difficult to digest between 10 and two. And then six to 10, you wanna have a meal that's easier to digest. So it doesn't necessarily have to be smaller, but it should be easier to digest because your stomach is gonna be much weaker in the evening than it is between 10 and two. So that's a great time to have a light meal, light digestion, family time and relaxation. Then from 10 until two, Hopefully we're sleeping. This is when we're processing food. This is when we're processing thoughts. It's when our body is doing all of that work that it needs to do while we're asleep. You'll notice that 10 to two period is your pitta period. Same as if you look at that morning section, when you're doing the most challenging work for the day, consciously, this is when your body is doing the most important work of the day while you're unconscious. So sleep is very important. Then from 2 a.m. until 6 a.m., that is when you're most likely to be dreaming. We're back to that creativity part of the day. So dreaming, and personally, I am going to still be sleeping past six, but in Ayurvedic, from an Ayurvedic perspective, between two and six, theoretically, is also a good time to wake up, to be creative, to exercise, to meditate, go to the bathroom. It's a number two right there we're talking about. Um but those people who like to get up early to work on their passion projects or to get up early and exercise, doing it before 6 a.m. from an Ayurvedic perspective is a great idea. If it's not a great idea for you personally, then don't do it. I am never going to do it. I know that it's supposed to be ideal. I'm never going to do it. <laughs> so you can take all of this with as many grains of salt as you like, but it's made such an impact for me thinking about eating the most difficult to digest meal between 10 and two. If I, again, if I'm having a salad, I usually have it between 10 and two because I know I'm going to be able to digest it more easily. I know that 
if I need to be creative, being creative in the afternoon is going to be better than if I try to do a really boring strategy project in the afternoon, I'm probably just going to falter. So just thinking about these things can be really helpful, especially if you are still working in a traditional, quote unquote, traditional job. So let's just talk about that a little bit more because you might be thinking, you know, like, sure, right? Like, this stuff is nonsense and that's fine. <laughs> I'm fine with that. But have you ever woken up around 2 a.m. and had so much difficulty getting back to sleep? Like it took literally hours and then you laid there and you thought about every stupid thing you ever said to anybody in your entire life, every bad decision you've ever made, any reason why you should be anxious about anything or conversely, you woke up at that same time and you couldn't get back to sleep and you like plotted out a whole book or had 17 great ideas and you had to keep a notebook next to your bedside. That's Vata energy coming for you right there. Also remember, anxiousness, fear, anxiety, middle of the night, people who have those woes in the middle of the night, I know it well, because I'm primarily Vata. Um, it's that Vata energy, man. It's that Vata energy. Sometimes I call it the witching hour. It's all the same thing. Um, and then two o'clock in the afternoon, we hit that 2 p.m. slump. We're suddenly, we're just like, oh, I do not want to do this. Like, I want to leave. I want to go do something that's fun. I do not want to sit here and like do accounting or whatever the task is that you're supposed to be doing. It's because you're back to that Vata energy and that Vata energy wants to be moving. It wants to have a creative outlet. So it's moving in your mind or your body physically wants to be moving. So if you're able to set up your day so that you can have more fun stuff, things that will engage your brain more in an enjoyable way between two to six, then that's going to work out really well for you. If you can go for a walk during that time, if you can do a workout, meditate, any of that sort of stuff between two and six, it's going to be really great for you. So another example is if you get to sleep right around 10, and you wake up and you think it must be like time to get up. And you look at the clock and it's 1.30 and you're like, whoa, man, I feel like I just slept the whole night and it's only been a few hours. That's because your body was in that pit of mode and your body was doing all of its, it was like it's night's cleaning cycle, just like your self-cleaning oven. This is your body's self-cleaning cycle. It is digesting food. It is sorting through all the things that happened in your brain that day, filing things away in the filing cabinets, doing all that good work. And you wake up and you feel rested because your body's already done so much of the work that it needed to do. So if you can get to sleep early in the evening, um, 10, 10, 30, 11, you're going to be doing some great things because you're tapping into that pit of energy. You're going to get that HGH human growth hormone released and doing all that good stuff. And then there's lots of times too, where we're at work from 10 AM to 2 PM. We get more done in that short period of time than we do the rest of the day. And you're like, <laughs> Then you get to the two o'clock Vata hour and you don't want to do anything else. You're like, this is so frustrating. I get so much done this morning and now I can't do a thing. It's because you tapped into that pit energy and now I've hit Vata and your brain just does not want to be doing that productive stuff anymore. And then finally, like who has not sat down on the coach after supper and just wanted to sink into the coach and never move again? That, my friends, is Kapha energy relaxation, restoring, connecting with friends, connecting with family. That's why evening is a great time to do nothing because that's what your body wants you to do. It's starting the relaxation process to get ready for bed when that pit of time comes at 10 p.m. So what does all of that mean? Doesn't have to mean anything. You can take this information and do with it what you like. But if you want to embrace productivity, you want to get more done in less time without having to do some crazy hacks, it can be helpful to consider what time of day you're scheduling things. If you are the person who schedules meetings in your office, your company, your building, try to schedule them before 2 p.m. when people are in that productivity mode. Schedule creative endeavors for after two. Try to make your to-do list for tomorrow between two and six. 
because that's when you're going to be ready to start getting that stuff out of your brain, the things that you don't want to do right now, but you know need to get done, write them down between two and six at the end of your workday. It makes perfect sense. Get it out of your brain. You don't want to do it right now, but you want to get it out. And then in the morning, you can tackle it. And finally, plan more relaxation time in the evenings. Like how lovely is that? And if your relaxation includes going for a nice walk, maybe your relaxation does include a workout, that's fine. And I don't want you to think that, oh no, I can't exercise after supper because I'm supposed to be relaxing. You don't have to live and die by these rules, but they, and they're not even rules, they're guidelines and they can help you. Because what I really want you to take from this is knowing the ideal time to do different things should be empowering and not something that holds you back. So if you're not naturally a creative person and you know that you have creative work that you need to get done, plan to do it in that 2 to 6 p.m. time frame because you're going to be more likely to tap into those creative juices during that time than if you did it in a different part of the day. If you have difficulties concentrating, plan to do your most heavy brain work between 10 and two, that's that pit of time where we're getting stuff done. It's going to be easier to tap into that energy and get it done. And if you're not sure if any of this works, like what's the harm in trying? If you have a really brain heavy thing to get done and you have a creative thing to get done, why not put the brain heavy thing, the logical thinking thing during the 10 to two period and the creative thing, the two to six, if you have the time to do that, If you have the flexibility to do that, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you try to see if it makes a difference? And if it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, you can just say, that was a load of nonsense and move on with your life. No harm. All right, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you did find it interesting. But you know, we've all been in those afternoon meetings where nobody can concentrate. Nobody has any ideas. You all just want to be somewhere else. So doesn't it make sense to maybe at least try having meetings during those focused hours between 10 and 2, where you can probably get some more done? And doesn't it make sense that maybe you leave more creative, more free-flowing work for later in the day when you know that that drive to really you know, get things done is waning and to leave some of your lighter, maybe your more creative, more free flowing work for later in the day when you are craving something a little bit different. So anyway, there's lots of stuff to unpack there. And that was a very, very brief little flash look at the science of Ayurveda as far as the hours in the day go. But again, I hope that it was interesting for you and I'd love to chat with you if it was. I have some other podcast episodes I can refer you to and even some blog posts if you want to learn a little bit more about Ayurveda um, from that standpoint. But I would love to talk. Find me on Instagram at suzy.fevens, S-U-Z-I period F. E V is in Victor, E N S, just like it's spelled in the cover art. Or you can send me an email at info at suzyfevens.ca. Yeah, that's it for this week. If you're listening to this on, I almost said opening weekend, on launch day on April 15th, I hope you have a wonderful Easter weekend. And if you're listening to it on any other day or time of year, I hope you have a great day, regardless of when it is. I will talk to you next time.